Welcome. My name is Ed Richardson and I'm Keystone's Director of Education. Today we're going to be talking all things physics aptitude test. This is an admissions test that students have to sit if they're applying to read the following degree titles at Oxford. Engineering, Material Science, Physics and Physics and Philosophy. I'm delighted to be joined by our expert, John Gale. John is one of Keystone's longest serving professional tutors and prior to joining Keystone, he spent many years teaching in a classroom uh, at schools uh, with me, which is wonderful. Uh, John's got over 5,000 hours uh, of teaching maths and physics and science generally. He was a former head of physics, uh, so I don't think we can be better placed uh, to better understand the demands of this assessment. John, can you explain what the PAT is uh, and what, it, what it's there to test? So as, as you've already said, the, the PAT is... Um, a pre-requirement for students that are looking to study a range of STEM subjects at, at Oxford. Um, it is designed to basically elicit the academic suitability of a student um, for a particular degree course. Um, and so it tests their capacity to answer pretty high-end questions in both mathematics and, and physics. Great. And so how's it broken down? What's the structure of the pattern? What does it entail? So it's a 100 mark test uh, and you have 120 minutes, two hours to, to sit the test. Uh, and it's split into two sections. The first section is 12 multiple choice questions. They're worth two marks each. But what <laughs> what arbitrary kind of figures are put on them, you know, is sort of irrelevant, really, because actually the demands of those multiple choice questions kind of vary from things that students will be able to answer very quickly to actually very, very complicated type questions. Mm -hmm. um, so that makes up this, this 24 marks. The, the remaining 76 marks of the paper are made up of long form questions um, on both mathematics and physics, ranging from kind of four, five, six, up to 10, 12 mark questions. Interesting. So it's, it's I can I can understand the challenge. Uh, wh what's a good score? H how difficult is the pat? It's... You've alluded to some level <laughs> of difficulty, uh, but can you tell us? Yeah, how difficult is it, and and what is a good score? Yeah, um, it's it's really hard. <laughs> I think in short, it's extremely difficult. Um, and actually, you know, when when you think about the candidates that are sitting the test. Um, they are some of the brightest kind of STEM subject students from, from around the world that are, are entering into this exam. So it's, it's used to, to essentially kind of drill down into to who, who's suitable. Um, and surprisingly, the kind of mean marks are, are pretty low. So in 2019, the mean mark was 41.5%. In 2020, that rose to 49.5%. And then last year, it was 43.1%. So given, as I've said, that these are some of the brightest students that are, are, are sitting this, this test, those marks can be pretty shocking. And actually for a number of students that kind of start out on the journey to sit the pat, when they first kind of look through papers and, and start to kind of wrap their heads around the question structures, actually they're, they're pretty overawed by, by the paper. You know, they, they're used to scoring 80s, 90s, 100% on, on physics and maths tests. And then all of a sudden you're saying to them, well, actually, like if you're hitting 50 percent, you're not doing bad in a lot of cases. You know, that, that's a bit of a strange position for them to be in. Interesting. So what, what are your top tips? H how do you prepare appropriately? You've mentioned this idea of, you know, when you start preparation, looking at a, pa a paper and then this sense of, you know, perhaps large swathes of tests you wouldn't be able to kind of comprehend or tackle. You know, what are your top tips for preparation? I, I think. As I said, you know, students a lot of the time can be overawed by the questions because they are presented in a really abstract con context a lot of the time, you know. And actually, when you start to unpick what's going on, surprisingly, a lot of the maths, particularly, is from a GCSE level. And that's because it's the universal. It's what the vast majority of students have done it, you know. It, a levels are taught in in many many different ways and mo modules and topics are taught you know in in random orders so the examiners know okay this is this is the universal this is what everybody has so actually scrubbing up on a lot of your gcse maths and physics is probably the first place to start and starting to to look at things in a very simple way rather than kind of leaping in assuming oh this is for oxford 
I must come up with some revolutionary way of answering this problem or looking at this. I think the there is a large number of practice papers that are freely available on, on Oxford's website, and they, they kind of go all the way back to sort of 2006 and 2007. And actually, I would say that whilst the earlier papers are very good for having a look at, it's important to recognise that the test is very different now to, mm -hmm. to what it was like back then. So you see a lot of students that jump straight into, well, I'll do last year's paper first. But actually holding those back for a time when you're ready to start doing things within the, the timed kind of constraint situation is really, really important. So I would start by looking at some of the older questions, starting to get a feel for, OK, this is this is the language they're using. This is um, what they're kind of indicating they want from you when they phrase something in this way. I would spend a lot of time looking at um, things like um, physics Olympiad papers. I would look at some maths Olympiad papers as well, because question structures are, are very, very similar. Um, I would ensure that you have committed to memory all of the equations that it sets out in the syllabus because you don't get a data booklet like you would in your A-level exams or in your GCSE exams. So it's really important that you have, you know, the complex trigonometric identities committed to memory and stuff like that. So I, th I think those are very, very good places to start. Initially, I would not be worried about the time. Initially, I think it's really important to work on strategy. It's really important to build your confidence that you understand what a question is getting you to do before you then throw in this highly time pressured element. I think it's also very, very important that students are confident in just moving on from something. You know, if, you, if you're spending five, 10 minutes on a two mark multiple choice problem, you're shooting yourself in the foot for later on in the paper. That is time you're never buying back. So if you're not sure about something, by all means, put something down but move on. The way the test is marked is quite interesting. And I've, I've heard stories from kind of admissions tutors and markers of the test who say like, actually, I, I saw this student's answer and it was completely incorrect, but it was really elegant what they'd done and really interesting. And so we awarded them partial marks for it. You know? And so it's, it's about how you think about the situation in as much as like, maybe not even necessarily getting to a right answer as it were, but how you process that information is, is vital. Showing your thought process, showing stages in your working out, for example. Great. Thank you very much, John. Some brilliant top tips there uh, and good luck to those who are going to sit the pat in the upcoming future.